Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. In our last session, we left Paul basically in the custody of some Roman centurions in Caesarea. He is waiting to stand trial to have a hearing, shall we say, in front of Felix, the governor of Caesarea. And at that point, he will be probably uh, given either access to go on to Rome because he has appealed to Caesar as a Roman citizen or he will be probably persecuted, uh, maybe even executed, depending on the outcome of this hearing. They are waiting for some of the uh, Jewish uh, leaders to come and testify against Paul because it is obvious if they're going to have a hearing or a trial, it has to be two sides to the story. And so we pick up in Acts chapter 24, verse 1. And after five days, the high priest Ananias came down with the elders with a certain attorney named Tertullus, and they brought charges to the governor against Paul. And after Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying to the governor, Since we have through you attained much peace, and since by your providence reforms are being carried out for this nation, we acknowledge this in every way and everywhere, most excellent Felix, with all thankfulness. Well, first of all, Tertullius, this attorney, is basically trying to lie his way onto the favorable side of Felix. The Jews did not like Felix. The Jews did not like the Roman rule in their nation. And this whole story about all of these reforms being carried out and how much better everything has become since Felix around, that is just a lie to get his favor. And I bet you Felix knows that, but you know, he's going to play both sides against the middle if he can. And so thus he sits there and kind of absorbs what Tertullus is saying to him. We pick up in verse uh, <clears throat> 4. But that I may not weary you any further, I beg you to grant us, by your kindness, a brief hearing. For we have found this man a real pest, and a fellow who stirs up dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. And he even tried to desecrate the temple, and then we arrested him, and we want wanted to judge him according to our own law, but Lysias, the commander, came along and with much violence took him out of our hands, ordering his accusers to come before you, and by examining him yourself concerning all of these matters, you will be able to ascertain the things of which we accuse him. So basically, they're telling a very tainted side of the story against Paul, and they are trying to make it appeal to Felix as a Roman ruler. And they are saying that Paul is a uh, person who stirs up the people and causes riots and dissension. And he even walked into the temple and did uh, things that he shouldn't have done in the temple in this regard. Now, what we have to understand as we look at this is that, again, the Romans weren't persecutors of Christians. At this point, the only time they persecuted any religion is when that religion stood out against them or caused the empire, uh, the empire's rule and authority to have problems. And this wasn't the case at all. They rarely got involved in religious laws, especially of other religions. Now, if it dealt with the Greco-Roman gods, maybe. But that's a plurality of paganism that they knew very well themselves. When it came to the Jews and their monotheistic attitude towards one God, or it came to the Christians and their adherence to this um, person who the Romans had put to death, uh, Jesus the Christ, they basically just kind of let them deal with their own little thing. And uh, Tertullus says, hey, we tried to take it into our laws and deal with it, but your commander took it out of our hands, and now we're here, and we think you'll see it our way. And, of course, you know, they're playing a very legal, um, pseudo, um, we want you as our friend type attitude towards Felix. Let's pick up in verse 9. 
And the Jews also joined in the attack, asserting that these things were so. And when the governor had nodded for him to speak, Paul responded. This is Paul talking. Knowing that for many years you have been a judge to this nation, I cheerfully make my defense. Since you can take note of the fact that no more than twelve days ago I went up to Jerusalem to worship. And neither in the temple, nor in the synagogues, nor in the city itself did they find me carrying on a discussion with anyone or causing a riot. Nor can they prove to you the charges of which they now accuse me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, he's talking about Christianity, the way, capital W, the way, which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law, and that it is written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there shall be certainly, or that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. In view of this, I also do my best to maintain also a blameless conscience before God and before men. Now, after several years, I came, among, came to bring alms to my nation and to present offerings, in which they found me occupied in the temple, having been purified without any crowd or uproar. But they were certain Jew, there were certain Jews from Asia who ought to have been present before you and to make accusation if they should have anything against me, or else let these men themselves tell what misdeed they found when I stood before them, or before the council. Other than this one statement, which I shouted out standing among them, for the resurrection of the dead I am on trial before you today. But Felix, having a more exact knowledge about the way, put them off saying, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will decide your case. So Paul makes his defense and he says, hey, you know, my accusers aren't here. Um, I did nothing out of the ordinary. I caused no riots. I was not causing dissension amongst the people. I was doing my religious duty. I brought alms to my nation. In other words, he says he brought a gift to the poor in his own nation. He's taking care of his own people, the Jewish people. He's doing what he should do as a Jew. He goes to the temple and nobody there messes with him until they decide they don't like him. And until certain Jews from the Asia Minor Territory happen to show up at the same time and they say, that's the guy that we don't like, then they cause the problem, Paul says, not me. And so Felix says, okay, well, I'm going to make a decision real soon. And that's where we'll pick up in our next session. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the truth that we can learn as we continue to study it embedded in our hearts, that we may know you better. In your name we pray. Amen.